The Queen of Granada by M. Riff Chapter 149, The Crash Rita felt as if all eyes were on her. Perhaps it was because she had pulled the hood over her head and carried two large bags, one under each arm. For that reason, she pushed the hood back and let it hang down her back. Finally, she approached the house. However, it wouldn't be wise to go directly to the front door and fall into a trap. While hiding behind a utility pole, she tried to sense if the car was nearby. She was convinced they had parked it somewhere close and were waiting for her. She carefully leaned forward and glanced toward the house door. It was closed and everything appeared normal. But in the distance, she noticed a small part of the panther's bumper, as a sign that the men had parked the car just around the corner. She tiptoed and squeezed herself between the VW bus and the wall. Holding her breath, she quietly pushed the door back and got into the van. Suddenly, she heard a loud crash, like someone trying to crush the car under a sledgehammer. It turned out to be a spanto, who had jumped from the house's roof to the electrical pole and then landed on the roof of the Volkswagen. He crawled inside through the vent, hopped onto the table, and then onto the floor. He moved playfully around Rita's feet and purred, as if he had been worried about her. Before opening her school bag and placing a book on the table, she closed the curtains of the windows. Espanto jumped up on the table and curiously sniffed at the book. Probably, the book might have been stored in a basement with rats and mice, and Espanto could detect their scent. However, as Rita began to flip through it, Espanto curiously examined the text, almost as if he were trying to read it too. Rita made an effort to read a few lines aloud but couldn't grasp the content. Eventually, she gave up, closed the book, and concealed it in a hidden compartment beneath the small sink. She then found a pair of nail clippers in the car's glove compartment and began to unravel the yarn from the sweater. Meanwhile, Espanto lay on the bed, grooming his fur. Rita wound the yarn into a ball, and it brought out the little kitten in Espanto. He kept glancing at the yarn in Rita's hand, hoping she might accidentally drop it on the floor so he could play with it. Suddenly, Espanto pricked his ears, listening carefully to the street outside. He stared at the curtain behind the front window and began to growl. He stood up, raised the hair on his arched back and hissed. Rita could feel the vibration of a powerful engine, making the ground beneath the van tremble. The nail clipper on the table rattled, sounding like someone's chattering teeth in fear. Rita remained still, holding her breath. The two men had evidently noticed that Rita must be in the VW bus and had decided to sneak up in the Panther. They only had orders to ambush Rita on the roads and wrest the book from her hands. If they were to break into the house, they had to get confirmation from the boss himself. Before giving up and driving back after the confirmation, they had decided to scare Rita and make her hand over voluntarily the book. But the situation seemed to be deadlocked. On one side of the van's windshield, a black cat arched its back, growled, and hissed aggressively. On the other side, a black panther roared violently with all its horsepowers. The smell of smoke and burnt tires suffocated Rita. At last, the panther gave up, retreated, and drove on furiously. Rita was convinced that they would return in the dead of night. Espanto stayed alert for a while, but then he calmed down, lay on the bed, and continued grooming his fur.